Hey travelers, Mag, I, and me mom here on day 28 of our trip across the United States. Yesterday was a pretty good night. We got done everything we wanted to do. We maintained our four hour lead on our schedule. This morning we're starting the morning in Syracuse. We don't really have much in Syracuse to do. Instead, we're gonna head straight into Auburn. And in Auburn, we have a whole lot of targets that we think are gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna get a chance to play around and explore the city for the morning before we move on and cover our miles for the day. Today and tomorrow are our last two days with me mom. So we're really trying to maximize our time and make sure we're seeing all the stuff we wanna see and wrap up our county and page targets by the end of the day tomorrow. We're hoping we can maintain this lead we've had on our schedule. If we have an extra four hours to spare, that means when we get up to Rochester, we'll have an extra four hours to spend in the city and explore. So fingers crossed on that. Fingers crossed on today offering us some gems. So we're gonna see what's on ahead. Come on, let's go check this thing out. We drove straight from Syracuse into Auburn. As soon as we arrived, we began hunting caches placed by Mama Bear, one of the original hiders in the game. She's been maintaining listings for well over 20 years. The first stop on her geo tour let us see the Owasco River from Market Street Park. Then we went just down the street, got to see Auburn back in the olden days. Although we've seen plenty of horse-drawn carts around New York, it wasn't like this. Then we made our way over to Freedom Park. This little treasure of a park highlights the work of Harriet Tubman with the Underground Railroad, and holds a prominent place right in the middle of this little city. The entire city had a warm, welcoming feel to it. As we walked around, the sun was shining down on us, birds were chirping, and all the people that we passed by exchanged pleasantries. Which was great, because it's obvious that we're tourists. As we walk around shooting videos and taking pictures of ourselves with our phones and the cool statues around the city. Just a few hundred feet from the Harriet Tubman statue rests the Seward House. This gorgeous estate is surrounded by two acres of gardens and trees. It was originally built back in 1816 on the outskirts of the city. In 1951, it was donated to the Fred L. Emerson Foundation. From there, Betty Lewis, the first curator of the museum, spent four years cataloging and organizing the belongings so that it could be opened up to the public. We were certainly appreciative of the opportunity to tour the grounds and learn a little bit more about this historic home at the heart of Auburn. We then ascended up to the top of Fort Hill Cemetery. This location serves as both a cemetery and a historic site. And as we walked around the grounds, it became apparent that it was rich with history. Dating all the way back to the 16th century, the local Indians had used this hill as a fortified area. And after a brief exploration, we were able to find the Seward graves. Their resting spot demands a fantastic view of the cemetery grounds before them and was also the center point of a virtual and several adventure labs. The day quickly drug on toward the afternoon, so we had to begin to wrap up our time in Auburn. Our last stop in the city included a trip over to Emerson Park. This gorgeous park is located on the north shore of Owasco Lake, and the main path down to the water passes right by the Women's Veterans Memorial. This park can stand on its own on the waterfront views but it also offers boating, disc golf, picnicking, playgrounds, and sometimes even concerts. I'd be willing to bet many of the Auburn locals spend a lot of time here at Emerson Park. I know if I lived here, I'd be walking down on the waterfront at least a couple times a week. We left Auburn and made our way over to Binghamton, where we took a walk across the South Washington Street Parabolic Bridge. Built all the way back in 1886, this bridge spans the length of the Susquehanna River, and it definitely made our short visit to the city well worthwhile. Our day began to wind toward a close when we reached Johnson City. We went down Gray's Trail on the IBM Glenwood, and the geocaches here were not exactly easy to get to. This one had me crossing the river and crawling into a tube but I wasn't about to let that stop me from finding this little nano in the woods. Tricky little guy. Then we continued even further on down this treacherous trail. Fortunately, Meemaw's kids would not know the kind of obstacles she had to endure. Since we opted to take the high road, which was the easier of the two trails, 
That meant we needed to reach the low road again, got close to where we were going. Me mom took up a good vantage point while I made my way down this slippery hillside. I could hear her gasp every time I lost my footing, but the treasure discovered at the bottom was well worth the journey to get here. You cross a little stone footbridge and look out to the side, and suddenly you're looking at a waterfall that seemed to have snuck right up on you. It follows a leisurely pace flowing down the river and meandering its way under the little footbridge nearby. I found its rhythmic flow very soothing. I counted myself very fortunate that the way up was much easier than the way down, because when you fall going uphill, you mostly just land on your face. When you fall going downhill, you land on your everything. Me mom looked anxious every step of the way as I climbed back up the hill. The dog seemed much less concerned. This is like a slow Tuesday for her. Come on human, hurry it up. Making it back up the hillside and finishing our trek down Gray's Trail signaled the end to yet another day in New York. It's always bittersweet to see the sun go down on day on the road. All right, travelers, that brings a close to another great day spent on the road here in New York. It was a pretty good day. Once again, we started the day ahead of schedule, so we didn't have anything pushing our time. We were able to visit all the stops we wanted to visit, and we were able to do all the things we wanted to do today. We started the day off in Syracuse and immediately popped over to Auburn. Auburn was a really good time. We did a lot of older caches that were placed in 2001 and 2002, and they brought us to some pretty good spots around the city. From there, we just kind of coasted our way through the day until we ended up here in Elmira. Another sunset coming down and the day is coming to an end. But we're not quite ready to close it out yet. We want to be able to have some extra time in Rochester tomorrow to see the city. So we're going to keep going through the night so that we can get staged to start there in the morning. It shouldn't be too difficult. We've had pretty good sleep the last few days. Tomorrow's also the last day that me mom's going to be with us. So she'll start with us in the morning. By the evening, we'll be pushing her out of the car at a nice slow five miles an hour for the tuck and roll. <laughs> we appreciate you guys continuing to tune in with us. Be sure and like and subscribe. We'll see you out there on the trails.